Welcome back, you're watching the CNBC Africa East 3 Route Special. I'm Lionel Skink, and right now I'm talking to you from Maputo, the capital city of Mozambique, which is the third out of the three countries in the East 3 Route. Just to remind you, it's KZN, South Africa, Swaziland, of course, and Mozambique, which makes the three countries in one. Uh, it's still lunchtime in Mozambique, but we want to check out the city and see exactly what this jewel of the Eastern Ocean or the Eastern Seaboard has to offer. There's a tram that's taking us through the town and uh, as soon as they come, we're going to join them. Maputo, known as Lorento Marx before independence, is the capital and largest city of Mozambique. According to the 2007 census, the population is just under 1.8 million strong. Maputo has always had a strong artistic spirit and this is reflected in the majestic architecture abound. A treasure trove of classic buildings, one can find masterpieces by some of the most famous architects at the turn of the 19th to 20th century. Maputo is home to works of art by Gustav Eiffel and Herbert Baker among others. It's famous for its vibrant nightlife and one can find a nightclub for all tastes. Apart from all the effervescent lifestyle and leisure offerings of this country, which was once recorded as one of the poorest in the world, today it is one of the fastest growing economies. A resources boom has fueled foreign direct investment and Mozambique enjoys a rate of 7-8% to 8 GDP growth. People are um, talking about Mozambique due to the recent discoveries of gas and oil and also for the uh, booming activity on coal, especially in Ted province. However, we have more business opportunities on sectors such as tourism. They had in last uh, 2011 attracted more than 2 million visitors or tourists. Mozambique is currently diversifying its economy and uh, activities such as agriculture, uh, manufacturing, service in general, even the banking sector is booming. It therefore made sense to use our stop in Maputo to get to grips with serious investment discussions. The inaugural East 3 Route Investment Conference saw big hitters from the investment communities of the respective countries make their case for investment along the route. When we actually began the East Route last year, we spoke about three things in the main. We spoke about promoting and encouraging the tourism numbers and boosting those tourism numbers between the three countries. We also spoke about encouraging investments. We also talk about the question of communities and therefore uh, ensuring that communities are empowered in the process and therefore that we are able to skill the communities and link them to development. Now, one of the things therefore through this route and this investment conference in particular we're doing is to begin to crystallize our strategic trust going forward. One of the things we're going to do in terms of our action plans going forward, we want to set up an intergovernmental me mechanism that would ensure that it coordinates issues of investments that should take place under the banner of the East Route amongst the three countries. It's a route that is positioning itself. It is getting support from prime ministers uh, of the various countries, even the president of the Republic of South Africa. That in itself tells you that we are actually in the right direction. The reason we are here is to build tourism. We are saying that this route is a tourism route. Hence, one way was emphasizing that point that tourism is not only about services, but is about the infrastructure, is about human factor, is about culture, is about all these elements that are able to combine the three regions. Hence, the emphasis was there. But secondly, if you listen to the statistics, they will tell you that one international tourist that comes to our shores will create eight international tourists that come to our shores will be able to create one permanent job. So as you agree with me, jobs in our area is quite critical. And added to that, if we are able to attract international tourists, you look at their spend per individual, it's very different from what we spend as the locals. So it is very much critical and important. As a, a, a country where we've actually been promoting a, <coughs> a rural or I would say a, a small scale tourism, and here there are different types of products that you can actually do and we're trying to promote that. We have a, 
We have uh, rural tourism, we have, uh, we have uh, tour guiding, we have uh, even you know, the conventional tourism that we have actually seen and that is really popular across. But with this, it's through Root uh, uh, Initiative. We are looking at it as, a, as an encompassing program that would actually involve as many people as possible from the different you know, di derivatives or I would say dimensions of tourism that we can offer. With the intoxicating city of Maputo in our wake, we were on the road again. It was on this track of road where we saw the usefulness of the vehicles at our disposal. Simply put, Ponta da Uro is 4x4 territory. It has some of the most remarkable tracks for your gas-guzzling motor vehicle. Okay, so we were in Swaziland and uh, enjoyed the cultural experience of Swaziland, the nightlife of Maputo. And now we're on our way to uh, KwaZulu Natal. And uh, the idea of the history route is that you need to be able to drive and navigate your way through these places. Now the road we're driving on right now is exciting as well as dangerous for the uninitiated. It's a very soft sand, 4x4s four only. We've been on this road for the last four hours. Uh -huh. Is it four hours? Yeah. We're just on, we're now approaching five hours and I think we covered a distance of 120 kilometers. Mm. As a traveler, you always have to find innovative ways to discover the country. Uh, this route and this whole package of the history route is all about that. We enter South Africa through the Corsi Bay border post, an area that forms part of the Lumbombo Spatio Development Initiative. The initiative is meant to develop rural tourism. Rural tourism has great potential as, in most cases, prime attractions and even world heritage sites are found here. This is the second educational that we, we've done. We've obviously done it the other way around where we started in Swaziland and Mozambique and come down to KZN. And obviously it's a different part of KZN. Last year we were in St. Lucia showcasing St. Lucia. This time we're up in Chosini showcasing a different part of, of that. Obviously, you know, you know when, you, when you're selling you know, newer areas, uh, you, you, you always uh, then um, focus because some of them uh, don't have as big infrastructure as some of those uh, big cities and it's all part of the process of then saying you need everyone to be part of it because uh, for it to start developing into a fully fledged uh, route there is some investment obviously that needs to happen on, on the route. The Umfolozi Park in Lufluwe formed the highlight of the excursion as we were lucky enough to view some of the big five games strolling along in their natural habitat. So this is the closest most of us will ever get to oh, yeah. Africa's prehistoric animal of the wild, the black rhinoceros. And we're not going to make too much noise, we're just going to drive the car just a, a few meters ahead so we can actually maybe it's, it's, say hi. Tiger Bay Lodge is a prime example of how tourism investment can benefit rural communities. Built on tribal land, it is in the hands of a consortium that involves private capital and locals. I think you've done the route from Mozambique. You came from there yesterday. It's quite a long drive to get here, but a beautiful drive. Uh, it's got different things to offer you. Similarly, people who are coming in from Durban or from the KZN side wanting to get into Mozambique, it's a long drive, but it's got different things that it offers you. Now, if you look at this facility, this dam, this river, it offers you an opportunity to start developing now from the middle of things. Um, when you develop here, you are therefore offering a setting or an infrastructure for people who are coming through from Mozambique, uh, midpoint, people coming through from a Durban point of view, this is midpoint. So there are opportunities in almost anything that you think um, travelers will ever want. For example, now we've got um, the hotel um, where people now can put up for the night and uh, get to enjoy all the benefits that are in there. Uh, the, the, the opportunities that we've realized are abundant here are opportunities around uh, um, any need that a traveller has and any need also that a, a person who wants to enjoy an environment away from an urban city, an, an urban environment, can actually uh, establish themselves. This year's East 3 route has demonstrated a seamless flow of people between three countries, every one of them with unique offerings and equally ripe for investment. It's a very big uh, benefit and the effort that we are putting, as you can see, to make sure that the, all the problems maybe that we can see 
has to be addressed. And uh, already I can also mention that, um, probably men mention that uh, we've got, uh, we've already finished building our uh, airport, the very big uh, airport, one of the biggest maybe in Southern Africa, I would like to say. So it's ready to be opened, uh, officially opened anytime soon. We need to do together to show that we can work together, we can market together our region. For Mozambique means that um, we, we, we are going to have more investments, more visitors. Um, we are trying now to, to let people know the Mozambican uh, um, the Mozambican resources, the Mozambican culture, the Mozambican uh, how is Mozambique now? In this way, we think that it's possible to have more and more people visiting Mozambique, more and more people investing in Mozambique. So it's very important for us as a country is very important for us as a region. I'm looking forward to the best time when we can actually take the best out of all of our neighboring countries. We put that into a package, we sell that into the global market, we make the Southern African development community to become a destination for tourists. We then can be able to have tourists that can stay, stay, stay here longer number of days, longer number of nights, and that in that regard, we all can become winners. And that's what tourism should be about. It's about sharing the spoils that we can derive out of international tra travels. Well, we've come to the end of our journey, and at this point of the journey, we hope that the name East Three Route rolls off your tongue as easily as, for example, the Garden Route or even Route 66. We've come to the end of our journey. It's been three countries, six days, and of course, we hope that you've learned something new about any one of the three countries that we've been to. For me, Lionel Skeng, thank you very much for watching. We're going back home now. <laughs>